I called the show Ode to a Hippie um, as a way to nod to John Keats, who is a kind of central figure in the exhibition. I used the death mask of John Keats that's in the Wadsworth's collection. Um, and we also have a borrowed from a collector a life mask of John Keats. Those are both in the exhibition and uh, Keats, the romantic poet, the great writer of odes. Um, I thought I would call the show Ode to a Hippie, the hippie being Paul Tech's missing artwork, The Tomb, Death of a Hippie. They're sort of the points around which the exhibition revolves to a certain extent. When I was thinking about how to display the life mask and the death mask, I realized at a certain point that I was making reliquaries. It was kind of a logical leap to think of Paul Tech and his technological reliquaries. And so there was kind of a link right there. Uh, I remember Patty Hickson, the curator, asking me at one point if John Keats was a hippie. And I, I said that I thought he was a hippie because he had been training to, to go into medicine and become a doctor, and he decided to chuck it because he wanted to be a poet. In a way, the exhibition is sort of like an attempt to evoke the experience of a romantic garden. Nature is sort of a human construct, and it changes, like, ideas of what constitutes nature change. Um, so I'm sort of more interested in the way that the natural thing might be um, put to another end through cultural manipulation. This is the first time I've had anything cast in metal, like I've never done that before. So working with a foundry um, and understanding the process and the way that aluminum behaves is like a whole new thing that I'm learning. I studied painting, so I don't have a background in mold making and everything I've learned has sort of been by working with fabricators, kind of watching how they do things, trying to communicate like as much as you can. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm trying to get at. This is kind of how I want it to look. And then other things come up in the process that you wouldn't necessarily come upon otherwise, like practical limitations of materials that I might not understand. When confronted with them by like a fabricator, I'm forced to sort of rethink earlier notions. And actually sometimes it ends up being a more interesting solution than what I was initially thinking of because I'm not limited to like what my mind can think of. I'm also able to merge with another person's thinking and experience and it becomes a bigger thing. Having a bolt of fabric, it's almost like a tube of paint. It's like a particular color, it's a particular surface. Those things can be put in play with each other, the way you might go about making a painting. The other thing I like about fabrics is they, they sort of get time stamped in a way, and like, you know, crushed velvet. I can't look at crushed velvet without thinking, you know, like something Janis Joplin would wear, or there's a velvet that has a snake skin print on it, and I think like, oh, Jim Morrison would look awesome in a jacket made out of that. That's the way that fabric and upholstery are sort of functioning in this show. They're sort of alluding to some sort of hippie or rock star aesthetic or, you know, sort of rock star glamour um, and maybe trying to give John Keats a little bit of that. Van Gogh did a painting of Gauguin's chair and the absence of his friend represented by the empty chair, I think, is just incredible. The idea of presenting a piece of furniture, um, it, it's like it serves as a, a surrogate for a human presence. It maybe calls to mind the absence of a human presence in a way, and much more powerfully. 
I gave the one looking glass a title Thanatopsis, which is a poem by William Cullen Bryant. This was one of my father's favorite poems, and it was one that he had to m memorize as a child in school. And my father, towards the end of his life, um, couldn't really speak anymore and was sort of failing. Um, but if I asked him to recite Thanatopsis, he could still retrieve that. Ideas in, of life and death and imagery have come up in the work quite a bit um, over the years. You know, it's something we all have in common, if not for ourselves, but people we love or close to. And it's like it's a shared experience.